going to do is there's a lot of people that ask about how do I put on a bridge? Well, you know, you stick it on the guitar and where does it go? Well, it gets really long-haired and can really can drive you crazy when you look at all the mathematics. But in essence, what we're trying to do is we're trying to match a static length, which is your scale length, to a dynamic length, which is your working length of your string. When you pluck a string, the string now goes from whatever it happens to be at rest, actually longer, and it's constantly coming back and forth. Uh, do yourself a favor and, and go to YouTube and, or just do a web search for a guitar string in motion. You're going to see it's not a graceful arc. So, with that being in mind, how do you do this? Well, first off, we have to find the center line of the neck. The center line of the neck is going to determine part one of where this goes. Now, you can go out and you can buy all those fancy and expensive little gadgets. I have a, this is like $2.50 at my local hardware store. I lay it right against the side of the fretboard and I can make a mark. I go down here, same thing, make a mark. So that length divided by two is just under inch and a half. That is my center line for the neck. It does correspond with the top center line because I did that when I set my neck. Now, what is my scale length? So when I come down here, for my center line, the 12th fret is right here, and that is 25.4. This is a Martin scale, so I, I know that it's 25.4 scale length. So 25.4, come down here, 25.4 is right in this here. So I'm going to go and take myself a piece of tape, and I'm actually going to take a couple pieces of tape, and I'm going to lay it in here, and I'm going to butt those two pieces of tape together, and that will be self-explanatory in a minute. 25-4. When I'm right at the nut position, right here at 25.4, I'm actually going to make a mark at 25 and a half. And you'll understand why in a minute. Now, I see that pencil mark. That's going to pretty much represent where I want my sap. I am not finished yet. This is just roughing in. So, along the line of the first string to the sap, all right, I'm going to want to be at 25 and one half inches to the center of the set. On number six string, I'm going to be one eighth inch more. So I'm going to go down from 25 and a half now to 25 and five eighths following the line of the string. And it's almost right there. Double check my measurements nice and gently. One and a half. Twenty-five and five eighths. The front edge of my bridge is where I want it to be. I'm not perfectly lined up side to side, but I am lengthwise. I'm going to take a pencil. I'm going to mark that point. Now, I want to get my center line, which is here, that center line, which is there. So now, I can put that one here right like this. And again, I can check my lines. Looking at my hole, that looks very good. It's following the taper my fingerboard. I'm going to come down here. That also follows the taper of my fingerboard very well. Okay, so I'm happy with that position right there. Now I got to go get my eye helpers. 
And now I'm going to buy my pencil mark. I'm very happy with where that's at. And I'm only going to mark one side. That way if I have to change the mark, I know I, I can use the other side. And again, I, I can't stress this enough. You've got to double check yourself and triple check yourself. And that don't look bad. Okay, I'm happy with that position right there. Right now, that is where I want my bridge to be. I'm now happy with where my bridge is. So that I can affix this bridge with certainty, this is where it belongs, I can now put my first hole in the top. One hole. All right. Hole number one is in. I'm now going to put the second hole. I'm using a 3 16th drill bit, by the way. And what I did so that I can assure my bridge doesn't move, I have that through the hole into the top, and that's affixing it. So now with my other hand, I can set that to my pencil line, and I go. Now, my bridge is set. I know where my bridge belongs. It is now pinned, and you'll understand what I'm going to do later when I glue this off. So you can see the two holes in the top. I can reach in here, and I know that I am on my bridge plate, and that's exactly where I want to be. Now, you can see I have nice, clean lines. The next step is to remove some tape. I'm going to put my ruler on here. I'm going to cut tape off on the inside of that mark. And if you notice, I have the ruler on the outside of my line. That way, if I slip, I don't put a scratch outside my work area. And all I'm doing, this is a, a new razor blade, and I know I just told you about how I go on the inside of the line, but because of the camera, and I'm kind of stuck, I have to be very careful. Okay, that is where the bridge, that's the footprint of the bridge. So what I have to do is I have to get the finish off of the top so I can create a wood surface so I can go wood to wood. I've used my masking tape. That's going to work as a little buffer for my little inlay. I'm going to set the depth of my cutter just that I go through the finish. I don't want to really go into the wood that much. I just want to get through the finish. That'll work. What I did is I, right here at that ring, I can make an adjustment up and down. That's not going to hurt anything. But I'm very happy with where I'm at. So now I'm going to remove the finish on the footprint where this bridge is. <laughs> 